My name's Ron Lewandowski. Um, I'm from a place called Ivins, Utah. I do astrophotography. In fact, I don't even own an eyepiece. <laughs> I uh, have two observatories in my backyard and uh, a pier that I welded. David Stubbington. I'm actually not in a club at all. Um, I just tend to run the rigs out of my uh, front yard most of the time. But I live just north of Fort Worth, a place called Keller. Skies aren't too bad there, maybe Portal 7 straight up, but I've got DFW Airport off to my right, and that's just a disaster. My name is Greg Jones, I'm from Dallas, and I'm with the Texas Astronomical Society of Dallas. My name is Jesse Nunez, I'm from Landrum, South Carolina, and I'm a member of the Roper Mountain Astronomers Club. Come on, guys. Yes, but I was born and raised in Marfa, mm. and I still have a house there, so... Okay. Uh, I've been, I normally set up at McDonald Observatory in the parking lot. Joe Belden, and I'm a member of the North Georgia Astronomy Group, and then as well as the uh, Wisconsin uh, Observers. My name's Steve Kaiser, in the same Texas Astronomy Society up in Dallas, and I live up in Flower Mound, just north of DFW Airport there. John Bora from Las Vegas, and a member of the Las Vegas Astronomical Society. Um, my name's Justin Doctor. Um, I'm actually not a part of a club because I'm from South Dakota, so I kind of just freelance my own my own stuff. So, uh, How long have you been coming to Texas Star Party for? This is my first year. Okay. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. What attracted you? I've always wanted to come, and then a lot of times with my work schedule, it was just never, mm -hmm. timing wasn't right. Wife said, you should look for cabins, and we let's go. And I said, okay. So we're kind of last minute attendees. Okay. But it was, it was awesome. This is my first year. Right. I've done the El Dorado Star Party a couple of times. This is, this is the first time here. Have you been enjoying it? Oh, it's great. It's great. It really is nice. Very, you know, lots of people, very, uh, very uh, good atmosphere. So it's the first time down here for the Texas Astronomy Star okay. Party. I tried getting in a couple of years ago when they were when they were doing a different lottery system for mm -hmm. cabins and mm -hmm. didn't quite make it for that one. So mm -hmm. this time they had it opened up and managed to get a cabin to keep everybody comfortable or we're, we're down here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is my second year. Um, first year was three years ago in 2022, so second year here. This, uh, 2019 was like my first year back after I'd been, I was here back in the 80s. Haley's Comet error. This is my first attendance of uh, Texas Star Party and it's been awesome. I would recommend it to anybody. I retired and I thought, I need something to do. And I'm technically based, and this is a technical hobby. Well, I used to do visual with a, a Celestron C8 back in the 80s. And then, um, then I kind of stopped for a long time and then got back into it. Um, after someone showed me some Milky Way shots, and uh, so I went from Basically, you know, not doing amateur astronomy for a while and jumped back in, got this real quick. <laughs> I actually started with an 80 millimeter refractor um, a few years ago, but then quickly got into this. Really enjoy it. Sometimes it's like a love-hate relationship. Things work, things don't work. Then you, you first start out, I started out with film mm -hmm. back in 1994 or 93. And then I got excited with the cookbook camera back in the years of the CD245 and kind of got hooked into it. But then there's a lot of things I've learned about pixel size. So I was shooting with a Biolog B 10 inch F10 and then realized that that wasn't really optimized for the pixel sizes. And back then there was no internet or YouTube videos or anything. So it kind of, kind of did it with a bunch of trial and error and persistence. And, now it's getting a lot easier. 
but the moths are getting com more complicated. How long have you been doing astro photography for? Probably about 15, maybe 20 years. With astronomy, I started when I was a teenager. Just had a little four and a quarter inch reflector. No no guiding, no anything else. You know, it was all visual and stuff. But as the years progressed and the equipment got better, it was easier to get stuff that was easy to control and everything that way. So I first started uh, as a photographer and I thought, you know, I've got this 200 to 400 Canon. I got a 600 millimeter Canon. And I thought, you know, could I use that as a telescope? I didn't have a motor. So then I configured it with the help of the the guys uh, at the Roper Mountain Club. And then I bought the 2600, attached it, and it gives me a nice wide field of view. Plus it's variable. About a year ago, I decided I need to get something longer, you know, focal length. And so, voila. And I plan to get uh, a reducer, so I have 1,700, and now I'm and 200 to 400, so. Awesome. I think that'll keep me busy for a long time. Yeah, tell us about your rig. Well, it's a uh, 140 millimeter refractor with a uh, mono camera on the back. With one camera, the ASI 6200, a you know, full frame uh, mono camera, a filter wheel with uh, the seven different filters, a German equatorial mount. This is a Mach 1, Astrophysics Mach 1, a sturdy gear, a mini computer on top, and that's, that runs the uh, acquisition software. Nina is the acquisition software that I use. And when I'm at a star party, I just Ethernet it, that into a laptop, a desktop from the laptop up to here, and monitor and control everything. And that's, that single power cable comes up through the mount and then up to um, this distri distribution block here. Now, these are the uh, Anderson power pole connectors. So this is the input power is just distributed to all these other connectors. One going to the uh, uh, camera, and then others are going to like the mini computer. This is a Pegasus Astro uh, power box, and what it's doing for me primarily is the dew heater. Uh, this is just a 19-volt uh, converter to power the um, the mini computer. The autofocuser, off-axis guider here, seven-position filter wheel, uh, tilt uh, adjustment, oh, yeah. the Gerd Neumann uh, tilter tilt adjuster. It's a 16 here. And I got the encoders on it. Okay. And because everybody's talking about the, the new thing is unguided. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to see, see what that was all about. I did get this used, so, but I see they have it marked up. It's a lot more expensive. But my wife has a, an expensive hybrid as well, so it's kind of mutual. Very heavy mount, but the one thing over the years, as far as that, I agree with you can never have too much of a mount if you can personally take care of it because you won't have to worry about vibrations, wind, and astrophysics and that. Very, I just love them. Also, do uh, Paramount as well. Um, I'll admit I like key points still better than APC. <laughs> APCC. Just the, mm -hmm. the learning curve. I'm not running a more of a Moravian C5 100, which adds more complication for people that want to upgrade to bigger format. Uh, you need a bigger computer to crunch the you know, picks insight because the files are a lot bigger. And secondly, the image circle, not all telescopes are going to be able to cover that big chip, but the AP-130 fits the tab. I waited over seven years for it. Um, absolutely, it's amazing. It's, good. Look, it's an i5. Just all it's doing is running. Uh, I got APCC on there. I have a uh, you know, I use for polar line shark pan. Absolutely. Like, it's worth the money, and I've confirmed the point and accuracy with T-point and also APC, and it says no movement requirement. So at the end of the day, if you can get that, it's perfect. So basically it's a Ascar 103 APO, ASI 2600 with uh, ASI uh, 103. This one is a Celestron Edge HD 8 inch on EQ6 Pro mount, and I'm running an ASI 533. I have a Takahashi New Q, it's 104 millimeter F5, and I had a Takahashi mount that I just sold, and I purchased this um, ZWO AM5 mount to replace it. The only thing is this living here, 
it's going to have to teach me to do Pixis site because it's the most opaque software I've ever tried to use. <laughs> Ron uh, convinced me to get another scope, so I got this Quest Star 7, which is a lot easier to carry around. The uh, mount is a Zewo mount, also very easy to, to carry around and set up. Uh, and since I got that, to make the whole process easier and to share imaging with as many peop people as possible, uh, I went to the cameras. In fact, I did get a Melcam before I before I went to the uh, cameras. I did go to a Melcam, and uh, for the same reason, because uh, you have a monitor and people can stand around and, and look at the images. And it's a lot. It's just, it's just a lot more convenient because it, you share individually uh, through the eyepieces. And especially with little kids, the first thing a little kid wants to do is grab the eyepiece and pull it to their eye. <laughs> and then there you are, you now you gotta set it up all over again. So that's what I that's what I do and I enjoy it very much. How have you been enjoying that scope? I know it's a new new kind of new. The one feature I liked about it that you had to buy these flatteners because the outside of a lot of the images, this one does not require one. And I have, so far, I think I'm at 78 gigabytes of data this, this weekend. And every image all the way to the edge is just flat, just night. So I'm super happy with, with the product. Uh, How have you been enjoying the uh, AM5? It's working okay. Um, the one thing I found out is you have to set the uh, guiding uh, section of the ZWO ASI Air Plus. You have to set the uh, exposure about a half a second. I've had it. I, I'm traditionally used to about three or four seconds, and a half a second, it just didn't seem like that would be even uh -huh. worthwhile. So I'll try that tonight and see if the guidance improves. So it's a little 92 millimeter uh, triplet refractor, and then I've got a ASI 2400s so full frame camera on that, and then running that with the ASI Air, so I can run that from the iPad and set it up, and it handles all the controls. And the nice thing about, I've got a RST-135, it's a, one of the harmonic drives. Mm -hmm. And I used to have a Celestron CGX, which weighed like four times that. How long have you had this mount for? You're good. Uh, let's see, about two years, I guess now. How are you liking it? Love it, yeah. This is a relatively newer William Optics Pleiades 68 scope, a ASI 2600 um, one-shot color camera on the back. And for here, I got a dual band band filter ha 3 so um and then this is actually my first mount i ever got back in 2016 good old orion atlas pro and it's still going strong so and this is my primary uh wide field rig here and then i run a b-link mini pc that actually doubles as a counterweight too so this one's my uh longer focal length rig um going for galaxy work uh it's got a stella lyra rc8 scope it's just a different variant of the GSO ones. Um, uh, this, I also have an ASI 2600. This is a monochrome version. I'm running a seven position filter, LRGB, and then I have an HA, an O3 filter in that one as well. I have a couple modifications done. I had a back plate made on this. One of the problems with the RC8s is the focuser is attached to the, the same holding cell at the mirrors and it cause flex. So this plate decouples this from that mirror so that top is fixed. And then I have an aftermarket Bader diamond steel pad focus on that one. Um, yeah, tell us about your tent setup. Here. So this is from Starpoint Australis out of uh, Australia. It's a rel relatively newer product that they've started coming out with. Use my ice fishing tent as a warm room over the control room, so to speak. So it's kind of my little quickly a portable service. That's awesome. What are you imaging tonight? Ah, uh, good question. I, I may just do some, maybe M, M81. I like to, from here, I like to shoot some of the galaxies and stuff. Because in Dallas, I have to use so many filters to be able to do it all. It's real easy to do the nebulas and everything with the filters, but there's not much you can do with filters on shooting galaxies. So mm -hmm. that's why I've been shooting those mainly while I'm down here. This weekend, I'm shooting LRGB. I've been imaging M51 on this rig, and I've been playing M82 on that one, and do something different tonight, but I haven't found out, found out really what I'm going to do. I've got a, an Excel spreadsheet that says this is what I'm going to uh, try and get at. We'll see how it goes. Okay.
Tonight, uh, I'll be finishing up uh, the Whirlpool Galaxy uh, in 51, and also the Southern Pinwheel Galaxy in 83. Uh, what do you like to use to process your images? Pixinsight. Sight. I, uh, as I said, I was a photographer. I am still I'm a photographer, and I use uh, Photoshop and Lightroom. And for one reason or another, I just I wasn't getting much accomplished uh, with my uh, imaging. But they finally said, you know, you, you really need to just try Pixinsight. It's specifically made for Astro. What software do you like to process with? Uh, Pixinsight, all of them. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> what software do you like to process with? Well, processing I use mainly Photoshop. Well, the Deep Sky Skyscraper. And Photoshop is what I usually process with. I don't, I don't use pics inside and just haven't okay. gotten into that. Yeah. Um, start with something small, like an 80 millimeter refractor, and then see how you like that and get familiar with the process before diving into something like this. Don't need expensive equipment. The little. C Star S50 or the Dwarf or whatever it is. Try that first and see if you uh, really like it and you can put up with getting out in the middle of the night and all the rest of those great things. Because unfortunately people buy expensive stuff. I would say just to keep at it, um, when I started it was very difficult. I would say my success to failure rate at the beginning was probably 25% success, 75% failure. If you just keep at it, don't, don't ever give up. Just keep asking for advice, keep researching online, and eventually it's, it, it, it gets easier and it's absolutely amazing. I would choose any other main thing for my hobby. Yeah, start small. When really start easy, go with the C Star or one of those things that, <laughs> you know, you set it up, you push the button, and it lines itself up, and you're ready to start taking pictures of things. But that's probably the easiest way to get in there astrophotography that way. That's a, a whole lot easier than the software available out there. So you get all sorts of different free software. I think the big, biggest thing I benefited from was taking, making the decision to join an astronomy club and then participating in the star parties and walking around and asking them questions and then showing them what I already had. And then I asked them, how can you help me um, work my way into it without having to go crazy uh, price-wise. What's been your favorite part of this week? Uh, just being able to get uh, some dark sky images. So I've I've kept the scope very busy all week. Meeting different people, you know, and that we're all kind of have uh, the similar interest. Just exciting to talk about how, how we migrated and what gets, keeps us in this hobby. The coolest event is one that the young girl won that Sea Star. I, I just thought that was awesome. I really like the dark skies, obviously. Um, it's a little bit darker than back home in South Dakota, and the dry air makes the, the scene so much better. And then that, I love the terrain too, the location I've sat here in the Davis Mountains. This star party, um, although we have star parties in our club, I've so easily made so many friends and exchanged so many, so, uh, so much contact information. And, uh, even though some of them are already gone, they already send me well wishes for my last night. It's like golf because I'm a golfer also, but very, there's a social aspect of astrophotography. So the communication is a camaraderie that you, uh, establish and the communication is just talking, meeting people. Uh, and then of course, when you're in a Bortles 2 site, I mean, the imaging is just fantastic. So. Um, I will be back uh, probably every year for as long as I can. <laughs>